Thank you for watching. Today, uh, before me, you see my uh, custom built Yeti Double XL. Now, what did I do to this car? I basically took two Yeti XL kits, hacked them up, put them back together using my uh, X Carve. Uh, you may have seen those videos. If not, go check out the playlist. Uh, a lot of work has gone into this car so far, and I just want to get it right the first time around. So I don't want to backtrack afterwards uh, by breaking parts and finding out that it doesn't work. I want to have it as bomb proof as I can right from the start. So I decided to do a couple of uh, modifications from my initial plan, and uh, I will go over them right now in this video with you. I had these two speed controllers at first, uh, Mamba Monster 2, nothing wrong with them at all, but these have been updated in the meantime, so right now you can, uh, you can get this Mamba Monster X, it's basically the uh, same speed controller, or by the same company, by Castle Creations, they make awesome speed controllers, this one however, uh, waterproof and you can also run a censored setup if you uh, choose to do so, so that's pretty cool, and then with the uh, XXL, uh, it does sort of make sense to put uh, 2x uh, branded speed controllers in there as well. So it's literally an XXL right now. Um, these two have a tiny bit of a smaller footprint, believe it or not. It's, it's only minimal, but it will allow me to turn it uh, 90 degrees just to make sure that I can fit it in the, in the fuel cell a tiny bit easier. Uh, because I'm going to run one speed controller in the back right here and I'm going to run one in the front. Now along with these speed controllers, I'm pretty sure that these motors, uh, as soon as I start gearing the car up, because that is one of the plans, that these motors are going to run um, a bit hot. Not super hot, but by gearing it taller, they're, they're of course they're going to be put under uh, some more strain. So I want to cool them down as best as I can. Now there's nothing wrong with the way that these uh, motors are set up right from the start. These are the Castle 1515 motors, 2200 kV, they're monsters, uh, really brutal power, I run these in my uh, in my regular uh, XL as well, you do not have any lack of uh, strength or torque or uh, anything with these uh, with these two. So uh, by putting two in, the car is not much heavier. I will get into that a tiny bit later. But by putting two in, if I'm going to gear them taller, they are going to run warmer. So I also want to install these uh, blower shrouds. Now, that instantly poses a problem because I have this uh, carbon brace, which I machined. I made a video about that. So you can check that one out as well. If you do run a regular motor setup, you can still use that brace, but with me wanting to put those blower shrouds on there, there's simply no place to install this uh, initial design. So I need to go back to the drawing board, redesign that uh, top brace, and I may make it a tiny bit beefier. There's no flex going on in the chassis as it is, but better safe than sorry. So I'm going to beef this up a tiny bit, make it a tiny bit bigger. Uh, I also want to extend it over the rear motor so I can encase that uh, rear blower too. And I basically want to have something in which those blowers sort of poke out. I will show that uh, to you later. Uh, last thing that I did to the car so far and I still have a couple of uh, steps to complete. I was really happy with the way the rear suspension turned out. That seems to work fine, but the front suspension I was not too happy with. The Yeti XL, if you take out uh, the batteries and you don't uh, take those into consideration, the Yeti XL as is weighs about 5.8 kilos. Now, I was finally able to sort of uh, uh, make an estimated guess on what this thing is going to weigh. This thing is going to come in at 7.1 kilos. That's only 1.3 kilos heavier than uh, a stock XL, which is really not much. That's like 25% weight increase and I got like double the power because I have two motors instead of one. Most of that weight is due to uh, the extra motor, the speed controller and of course the transmission case. Uh, I will be able to run a dig setup on this as well. If I, uh, if I choose to do that, I can basically dial in how much power I want to go to, uh, I want at the front and how much power I want at the back. The rear motor is only going to power the rear wheels and the front motor is only going to power the front wheels. So there's no uh, direct connection between these two transmission cases. With the car being 7.1 kilos, I was already not too happy with the way that the front suspension was set up uh, to begin with, with uh, the, the Yeti XL as it was. It has a dual rate front suspension, I just feel that it is a tiny bit too soft for what it should be. So the car really 
sits very low and uh, it will get caught up on, uh, on stuff if you take it over some rougher terrain. So I want this car to stand as level as it can. Uh, you can see that I managed to accomplish that with having two uh, Yeti XL kits. I also have uh, double shocks. The double shocks I managed to put those in the rear. I think uh, putting double shocks in the front would just look stupid and would put way too much weight in the front. So what I decided to do is I decided to not run a, a dual rate spring in the front. I just decided to double up on a bottom spring. The bottom spring is kind of firm. Uh, the top spring didn't do much with, uh, with the additional weight. It was basically fully compressed. So I just took that one out, doubled up on my bottom springs and right now I have some really nice suspension action uh, in the front as well. I also sw switched out the shock oil. I went from uh, 30 WT uh, shock oil, I went to uh, 45 weight shock oil. Uh, and I think it will handle all the abuse that I'm going to give it way better. In the bottom you can see the, the Delrin plate that I machined. You can see the carbon uprights. Right now I'm going to fire up the X-Carve again. I'm going to modify that uh, top plate. I'm going to, of course, use a new piece of carbon because this one uh, will not be used. This will just go in a, a sort of like a box of memories. This is the very first or one of the very first carbon parts that I machined with the X-Carve. I think it turned out nice. I want to do something similar with uh, a Hemistorm logo on it. I also want to put a Yeti Double XL on it. Uh, I of course want to put an Axial logo on it and also a Castle Creations logo. So let's uh, get to work and uh, see how it works out. Right here you see the brace that I previously drawn up in the Easel. Easel is the free online software that Inventables has for the, for the X-Carve. It's really easy to use. I have no uh, experience with uh, uh, CNC machining or with uh, 3D drawing, stuff like that. Uh, but using Easel is super easy. I already took these two uh, screws out. I made uh, two carbon rings as well that uh, connected one brace to, uh, to the other brace. Uh, the lower brace, however, I can... Uh, still use that one. I will show you that in a minute. Let me take this one off first. You can tell over here there's no room for me to fit one of these uh, shrouds so that's why uh, this part needs to be modified. Um, using easel you can also because I want to still be able to, to use the drawing that I previously made with these holes. Uh, you can just copy your drawing and you can modify it from there. So let me take this off and I will show you that there is room with that uh, other brace still in, uh, in position. There is room to fit this uh, shroud. Uh, the one in the back, of course, is not an issue at all. So there is enough room. So what I want to make is I want to make a new brace that goes, uh, of course, from here to here. It basically will follow the exact same uh, hole pattern uh, that I had on the other brace. Uh, so we will go from here to here. Then I want to uh, sort of extend it so it goes beyond this uh, uh, engine mount right here. So we will go around the back as well because I'm going to fit the other uh, shroud right here. So we will extend past that up and around, uh, be able to connect it over there, be able to connect it over there. So I will end up with something that looks sort of like this. Never mind the coffee stain. So I've got one blower there, one blower there. Um, I'm just going to draw that up and uh, machine a new carbon part. Hopefully it will turn out okay. Okay, the blowers are in place. I've zip tied them down so they sit uh, firmly. The part that I machined is also done. I transferred these uh, carbon rings uh, that I made in the in the previous run of uh, making it uh, that carbon top brace. I transferred those over so uh, everything should fit as it sits right now. So uh, these two screws they connect to the to the brace that sits on uh, on my end of the car. I still need to install some uh, lock nuts of course before I will uh, run it. For now I just want to make sure that it actually fits and that uh, everything can be bolted down as it should be. I will put these two screws in uh, just so that's uh, set for now. Perfect. Sometimes with a build like this, especially since there are no rules whatsoever, uh, you need to take a few steps back in order to move forward. Uh, this build especially with me thinking that I may overheat the motors at some stage, uh, installing those blower shrouds sort of uh, throws a spanner in, but uh, it doesn't really matter because you just machine a new part and uh, you're good to go.
that's the cool thing I think with uh, an X-Carve. Also, if eventually it turns out that I have some parts that uh, are going to break, I could just re-machine them, uh, alter them a tiny bit, and uh, I'm good to go again. I think for now, this turned out uh, pretty good. I have, of course, a lot of uh, wiring still to do. I want to put some uh, castle connectors on these uh, ESCs and uh, make sure they're properly split so I can run them to the battery trace. But for now, I'm thinking that I'm going to leave it uh, at this. I need to uh, alter the, the top of that uh, uh, fuel cell, that's not really a fuel cell in the back. I need to make sure that I got a receiver and a servo in here. So I still have plenty of stuff to do, but in the next video I want to address uh, wheels and tires. There's nothing wrong with the wheels and tires currently installed on the car. Uh, these are the stock wheels and tires, but there are of course cooler options out there. So in the next video I will install some uh, Vanquish uh, KMC replica wheels. Um, they look really nice and uh, the finish quality of them is also really nice so we ordered a set of those for uh, this build I also ordered a Vanquish uh, rear axle in silver just to make sure that uh, that entire differential that's in there that it won't blow out I had some problems uh, stripping out gears on my uh, shorter Yeti XL so I don't want that to happen with uh, this car since it is a bit heavier it's of course more prone to damage even uh, so I'm installing an aluminium rear axle with will take care of that problem and I'm going to install some uh, different tires uh, Pitbull RC makes some really cool uh, Rock Beast XLs for the Yeti XL so that's also what I'm going to put on uh, this car for now, this is it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you have any questions, uh, don't be shy, leave them in the box below. If you want to be ahead of what I'm doing here, there's a link to my Facebook and to my Instagram in the description box, just so you can uh, check that out. If you wonder how this build got to the point where it is today, uh, go check out all the videos in the playlist. I will make sure that this one will also uh, be added to it, just so you can also see that uh, in building, you know, there's a lot of uh, taking steps forward and then sort of back tracking it at some point I machined some top plates for these battery trays decided not to go with that right now I'm altering this uh, it's all a part of the fun and it's all a part of a uh, building and I greatly enjoyed it I uh, hope you liked this video if you did don't forget to uh, leave a, a, a thumbs up and uh, if you haven't subscribed yet please do thank you so much for watching take care bye bye